Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to share my story with you today. I grew up in Yakima and was two years old when my brother's father moved him across the state to Burien. At that time, my brother asked his father, what about Jessica? What's going to happen to her? My brother's father knew that the environment in which we were living was not fit for children, but I was not his child, so he could not take me with him. I was six years old when I first experienced physical abuse. Neglect was a constant in my life. I don't know if I can adequately explain what living with chronic abuse and neglect is like for a young child. I felt worthless. While other children might be dreaming of what they could become when they grew up, a doctor, a lawyer, a firefighter, I was focused on one thing, survival. I was 10 years old when two police officers and a social worker showed up to my house one afternoon. They brought my mother to tears and all I could do was start crying myself. I had no idea what was going on as they pulled me out of my home and put me into this stranger's car. Just an hour later, I was told I was going to be staying with this new family and I was given a small amount of my personal items in a hefty trash bag. This is when my life in foster and kinship care began. After two years of bouncing between foster home, a temporary return to my mother's and my grandmother's home, I was finally placed permanently with my grandma, Patty Gonzalez, who became a state approved guardian and provided me with a loving home. Finally, having a safe, stable, supportive environment to live in, I was able to start to grow and not just think about surviving the day. Through talking about my past and having support from my closest friends, I slowly learned to accept life again. And yet, I never have felt completely normal. Painful memories have been the soundtrack to my life, underscoring everything I do. While I've come to realize that my mother meant well and that I love her unconditionally, her struggles still haunt me. But out of these storms came a cloud with a silver lining. Her life inspired me. I realized that I wanted my life to be different from hers. I wanted to make my life better. But how might I create that better life? I wasn't sure I had all the answers. And while my grandmother and brother certainly supported my dreams, they also did not have the answers. Things finally came into focus the summer after my freshman year of high school, when I went to make it happen a College Success Foundation event. During this camp of sorts for foster youth, the keynote speaker shared those sobering statistics about people like me. That was my aha moment. I knew I did not want to become one of those horrible statistics. Make It Happen truly changed my life. It helped show me that college was not just an option, but a certainty. I found that I had support through the College Success Foundation family, even if I did not have that same support from anywhere else. Upon returning home, I was so motivated to make college happen, I started to go to the college center that was also run by CSF at my high school. It was there that I learned that I was eligible to become a College Success Foundation Achiever Scholar. After months of waiting, I remember coming home from school one day to find a white envelope from CSF. Nobody was home to see me scream, jump up and down with joy and shed the first tears of happiness I had ever shed in my life. But I will never forget that moment I found out I would become a CSF scholar. In an instant, uncertainty was gone. I knew that I was going to college. In August of 2009, I entered my freshman year at UW with three CSF managed scholarships. With these, any financial stress I may have had was alleviated. But the support did not stop there. Anytime I was stressed, there were numerous people I knew I could call at CSF. I connected with College Success Foundation peer mentors who also had been foster youth and had beaten the odds to graduate from college. Even casual events like CSF's grab and go lunches held once or twice a quarter, provided me with incredible support. 
It was just a time to come and say hi, get free food, and you know how students love free food, <laughs> and connect with other scholars. My journey reached a pinnacle earlier this year. I stand here before you, a proud University of Washington graduate. Go Dogs! <laughs> But I'm not stopping there. I plan to go to grad school with dreams of one day becoming a CEO. I'm confident this can be accomplished, and that confidence is based on what the College Success Foundation has instilled in me. I'd like to thank everyone here today. Thank you for supporting students like me, who, I, who may have come from households that are far from ideal and face incredible odds. Thank you for saying that we are worth investing in and for giving us the opportunity to break whatever cycle we may find ourselves in. Your support helps us forge a better future for ourselves and for our community. Thank you.